Oh, that was better. I'll just give um, everyone a few minutes for those who were intending to come back. Hi, Anne. Hi, Helen. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. Thanks for coming back, ladies. Did you grab a cheeky snack? I did. I know other tea cakes are available, definitely, but these Marks and Spencer orange and chocolate ones are yum. They're very good. Excuse me if I get chocolate on the teeth. Mm, so good. <laughs> Hi, Laurie. Hi, Janet. Thanks for coming back, my lovelies. Thank you. Hi, Anne. Hey Jackie, thanks for coming back. Oh, that bit of sugar's good. Shall I just get stuck in? Okay. Sorry. So, in the first part of the video, using purse frames. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Thanks for coming back. Get them. Get them, Wendy. M&S, I know there are other supermarkets available, do a fantastic selection of tea cakes and Jaffa cakes and things. I had um, peach and passion fruit Jaffa cakes recently. Awesome. Definitely one to hide away from the rest of the family. Not that I ever do that, of course. So, oh, hello, Mary. Good morning. Where are you hailing from? Thanks for joining me. So this is the second part. You've just joined me at the second part of this purse frame making video, where in the first part of the video, I, t I showed you how to sew the fabric purse. So this is, this is a PU outer and it's a quilt weight lining and I showed you just how to do the sewing so if you're if you're joining this video uh, and you want to know how to sew this purse just stop this video now and have a, a quick look for the first part of the video because this video is going to concern itself only with the gluing in of this purse into this frame so at this point what you're going to need is this gluing malarkey is where most of us goes astray maybe just me do you know janet it it isn't just you it isn't just you and obviously you haven't seen all of the screw-ups and the swearing and bent frames from me having a little bit of a tantrum that have all gone in the begin when i first began my purse frame gluing journey so you're not alone. It, it doesn't seem like a natural and easy thing to do, honestly. Uh, and I've done it a few times now. It honestly isn't as hard as you think, as long as you follow these few tips and tricks that I'm going to give you. So what you'll need to do is to obviously is to be ready. So you're going to use this purse frame because this purse frame specifically fits this purse. So when you buy a purse frame from a given shop, you'll need, to, if it doesn't come supplied with its own pattern, you'll need to make up a pattern for the purse frame. So I know that these days you can buy purse frames that come with their patterns. And if you've not used purse frames before, it is a good idea to check with the vendor that the purse frame that you're buying comes with its own pattern because the pattern needs to fit the specific dimensions and shape of the frame. So the purse kit that I stock, the Easy Peasy 2 purse kit, comes with this frame and it comes with this pattern which is designed specifically. And you see, it's not something that you can just guess. There are, I can show you how to make your own purse frame patterns. But if you look how different the shape and size of this frame is, compared to the pattern 
there is a knack to making purse frame patterns for your frames so okay anyway so that's a word about the purse frame you'll need a purse frame um, I mentioned the glue earlier hi from Queensland excellent hi Helen thanks for joining me from Oz fab <laughs> so you'll need you'll need a glue so I use I know I know that this is back to front because Facebook always does this to your videos it makes things it makes things go back to front so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a word document with links showing you the glue that I use the machine that I use the thread that I use I'll also um, write down the stitch lengths for PU and the top stitch lengths for P and so on so don't worry if you don't remember this now or you hopped into the video halfway through don't worry um, but yeah, this, this glue is Gutterman HT2 glue. It comes in a metal tube. So if you've bought the Gutterman glue, which comes in a plastic soft tube, it is the wrong one and it won't work. So don't, um, I don't say this dismissively or bossily, it just, it won't work. It needs to have solvent in it. Basically, if you take the lid off and you have a quick sniff, it stinks. It stinks in a horrible chemical way, but the chemicals are what makes the purse frame glue work. And it does work because on the odd occasion, I've had to harvest a purse frame uh, from a purse because I've needed the frame for a demonstration because the purse frame didn't arrive yet. And it is the grip is mega, mega strong. You try it for yourself. This stuff is brilliant it's really really strong works every time hasn't let me down in the 15 plus years that I've been using it you will also need a pokey tool uh, and when I say pokey tool you'll need a small screwdriver it doesn't matter how wide the flat how wide the head is actually but what you're looking for is for a head that's quite um, not blunt but not not sharp because obviously well it wouldn't be a screwdriver if it was sharp but you need something that when you push against when you push the tool against the fabric it's going to have some sort of traction and it needs to be not fat because you're going to be using it to push the fabric of the purse frame into the channel so you're going to be doing you're going to be using this as a stuffing tool and as i said before i know this doesn't look like a flathead screwdriver because it isn't a flathead screwdriver it's a funky tool that i got from japan it might even be specifically for purse frame making i know that um handmade purse frame making is very popular in japan it has been for quite a while so in japan you can find purse frame making specific tools some of which i do own they're lovely because i've been making purse frame paces purses for a long time um but in place of a tool like this a flathead screwdriver that isn't blunt and is nice and narrow at the tip will work absolutely fine and the last thing that you need is just something to protect your table. So you'll see that I'm just using this big old white mailer here or a sheet of paper because this, this glue will attack your um, cutting mat or, or table or whatever. And you, don't, and you don't want that. So always work on a surface that is not going to, you know, if, if once you're done, you can throw it away or whatever. Um, so yes, you need you need to protect your table. You mustn't do it on a cutting mat. Donna's watching from California. This is amazing. And honestly, this is lovely, ladies. I just love being so international today. I don't know how I've done it, but it's brilliant. Thanks for joining me. Amazing. Wouldn't mind being in California at the moment, actually. But oh, there you go. This is the next best thing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Marjorie's watching from Brazil. Oh, thank you. This is fab. I hope I'm coming across nice and clear for you. Okay, right. Shall, shall we dive in? So the thing about gluing in your um, your fabric purse, I know I keep referencing fab fabric purse. I know it's made from PU, but we'll just say fabric purse so that we can separate it from metal frame. So, oh, hello from France, Lynn. Thanks for joining me. 
<laughs> okay, I was saying, so we need to do we need to do the gluing in two parts. We don't we don't glue the so let's front side and back side. I know both sides look the same, but I need to be able to differentiate one side from the other. So I'll say front side versus back side. We don't glue in our front side and back side at the same time. You always, always, when working with purse frame purses, do one side at a time. And I will say that if you are, if you've got a piece of um, material and you particularly love the design and you've decided, actually, I love this design so much, I want this to be my front side, you always glue in the best looking side first. So as I say before, maybe you're working with a bit of Tula and there's a gorgeous animal head here and you want that to be the front of your purse, you always glue the front side purse. Get that looking perfect, get that looking top notch. And I say that because it's easier to do the first side. When you glue in the second side, and you'll see what I mean in a moment, access is a little bit limited. So there's a risk that the front side may not look quite as nice as the back side, but you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So the first thing to do when we're gluing is you need to glue the metal, glue the metal first, and then straight away glue the fabric. And then um, I'm, 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 I'm talking you through this because rather than talking to you when the glue is drying, on the fabric purse, we're going to glue about, about a centimeter up from the side seam. So that's, a, that's about where my, about where my fingernail is. We do not want to be gluing on the side seam because that is going to be visible. So as I was saying before, the side seam is just exactly where the hinge is. And we want to keep that glue free and neat. So we're not going to be putting glue here. We're going to be putting glue around, around there, just where my fingernail is. And that way we're not going to see any ugly glue on this visible part of the fabric here. And then when we when we put it, so let's let's just pretend this is my glue nozzle. When we're putting the glue on our purse, fabric purse, we're literally going to apply it to the very top of the fabric, the very top edge, and the bead is going to be approximately four-ish millimeters. It's going to be enough so that you get a good bond, but not so much that it's oozing everywhere and we're going to be doing that from about a centimeter away from the side seam up the sloped edge along the straight edge down the other sloped edge and we're going to finish and we're going to finish about a centimeter from the side seam on the other side and for the glue in the purse frame now you might notice that's a little bit uh, fuzzy because I needed to harvest. So uh, COVID has, has slowed UPS down somewhat. I was expecting the frames yesterday. So I needed to tug of war a purse from this purse frame in order to do this tutorial. So skews the fuzz, skews the fuzz. Um, yeah, like I say, the glue is really grippy. It doesn't let go for a month of Sundays and it will after a lot of force, but that's why there's so much fuzz inside the frame. So when you get your frame, obviously your frame will be completely clean and empty of any fuzz when you get yours. So now to the gluing. When you have your glue tube, kind of make sure that squeeze if necessary it might not be necessary ensure that when you when you tip the 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 glue tube down the glue is going to start coming away freely i say that because ideally you don't want to be squeezing too much 
preferably given the choice the glue will start to come down gently just through tipping the tube down because if you squeeze unexpected things happen not at end of the world unexpected things but you just have more control if the glue trickles down gently when the tube is turned downwards so if you know predict what it's going to take for that to happen and give a gentle squeeze at the flat base of the tube here and obviously be be ready to glue another thing i will say so i'm i'm using you know a reasonably new tube which means that my nozzle is going to be clean and gum free and i want to retain that for when i use my glue to do another glue in frame because if this gets all gummy and and you know it, it stops the, the tube from being a fine nozzle we want it to be a fine nozzle so that it can get into the bottom of the frame nicely and easily so go to the trouble of cleaning up afterwards and hold it hold this up hold this upwards until you're ready to go and we're going to apply glue from all the way from one hinge end just on one side remember we're not we don't do both sides at the same time all the way from one side to the other side without missing any parts now unfortunately you won't be able to see this so clearly um, but you might be able to hear me making a tapping noise so I am applying I'm going to put it down on the table I'm putting I'm putting the, the glue in and you can hear you might be able to hear me making a little tapping noise with the metal which is coming from the metal of the nozzle and the metal of the frame and when I know that I can hear that tapping noise I know that the head of the nozzle has made contact with the frame and I'm applying glue everywhere when you get to the end flick flick up the, the nozzle and put the lid straight back on this guy this glue wants to escape it's an escape artist so when you're not using it you want to put the lid on straight away so put that down a second and have a look inside at your gluing and be happy that the glue has gone so if I if you if just imagine that this was an x-ray view I've literally glued from the very beginning of the metal all the way around all the way to the very end and the part that I have glued if you imagine that you could look through here is this part here that's where I've applied the glue it doesn't too matter too much if it goes into the sides that's fine but really we don't want to miss any of this part of the frame you could say that it's the base so if this whole thing forms a channel you don't want to miss any of the base of the channel and if you find that you haven't quite glued everywhere either go back in and then apply more glue or get a toothpick or something similar and use the toothpick to spread the glue because it's very very important that you don't miss any bits now when you've done that put that down and let it sit there quite happily to cure and straight away pick up your pick up your um, PU purse now if you are imagine that this is quilt weight fabric or something similar and you're very nervous because it's your first time totally understandable it's a good idea to get some washi tape and put some washi tape just over just over a centimeter down from the bottom edge to mask the fabric so that's going to prevent any glue escaping onto your fabric so if you are worried I mean I I never do because I've made quite a few of these but there's absolutely no harm in just protecting that fabric with a little bit of masking tape and it needs to be just over a centimeter down from the top edge because the the frame is a centimeter tall 
Okay, so to the gluing. Remember I said before, we only glue one side at a time. And if there is a best side, we do the front side first. And we put the glue approximately a centimeter away from the side seam. And it's gonna go on the top edge. And you need to be, you need to be quite generous. So yeah, actually, I'd say that bead is about, to be precise, four millimeters tall. And I'm literally applying it to the very top edge. So it, you know, along the straight edge is actually sitting on the fuzz of the fleece. And I'm just go slow and steady. And if I keep moving like this gently, it's not going to ball up and be in a massive glob. And I'm squeezing ever so gently at the same time. And when I get to the other side, I'm being very careful to stop a centimeter away from the seam at the other side. And when I'm finished, I kind of put my nozzle down. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. My nozzle is down on the purse. I've stopped now and I'm going to quickly flick the glue nozzle away because I'm finished and the glue just doesn't go everywhere. And then... Don't worry. Oh, sorry, Helen. Sorry you couldn't see that. I'm going to do the other side. I'll, I'll take more care to make sure it's visible on the camera. I will be doing the other side, Helen. Don't worry. You'll get to see then. And I... I'm not sure can you see can you see the yes you can see the glue bead there just there now I'm going to leave that to one side I'm going to leave that as to one side I'm not going to glue anything else I've done the gluing now and I'm, I'm literally just going to wait for about five minutes now if I was in California and it was lovely and baking outside I might need to wait less than five minutes because the amount of time that you need to wait varies on how, well, basically how, how warm your room is. And you need to wait for the glue to dry because when the glue goes nearly dry, you prevent so many accidents. You really, it, you know, you, you, prevent, you prevent the glue getting in your hair and your nails and the fabric and it's a nightmare and I'm drowning in glue. So really, I can't, I can't emphasize enough. The secret to making your life easier when using purse frames is to wait for that glue to nearly go dry. So it, it won't, it takes, it takes, I don't know, it probably takes about 20 minutes in all for it to go fully hardened dry so that gives you a lot of time what you're aiming for is the glue to go dry so that when you touch the glue the bead still wobbles but the layer that you touch on the outside is dry so your your finger comes away dry jennifer likes my nice piece of paper <laughs> you're always teasing me jenny but with good reason no that's because i don't wreck my table because the glue attacks Ikea tables it attacks cutting mats because of all the solvents in it so I have to use a nice piece of paper to protect my cutting mat oh don't worry Valeria you can um, you can watch the video back on YouTube I'll be putting this in my you handbag by Lisa Lam YouTube channel and it will also stay up on Facebook as well Oh, Suzanne sets a timer for five minutes. That's a great idea. You know, in all the time I've been doing this, I've never set the timer to five minutes. Um, probably just done something else. Um, <laughs> I just guess. Tea, take, tea cake time. So, the reason that we... Nom, 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 nom. The reason that we, we glue the purse frame purse is... The, the frame purse is because the glue takes a tad longer to dry on metal than it does on fabric. So that's the reason why I do frame first. And another tip is if you're making, if you're making a purse that's a good deal wider than this or 
you are not comfortable with eyeballing things, it is worth getting a fine piece of washi tape and marking out the center, the top edge center of the frame. I haven't done it today because I'm quite happy with eyeballing it, but completely understandable. If you're not happy with eyeballing the center of things, mark out the center top edge with a fine piece of washi tape. Pen won't work because, you know, you're just right and, and, and it would come off anyway. So use a fine piece of tape to mark out the center of your frame and conversely you can make a tiny scissor nick in your fabric purse to mark out the center so that when you bring the two guys together you can ensure that they're married together centrally. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it but yeah actually it's good practice too especially if you've not made one of these before. So I think I think we're getting close to the five minute mark. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a touch and wobble test. We're getting there. You know, and you, you might even think, well, that's just too dry now. It's just not gonna work. Oh, you know, I think I haven't quite put enough glue on this side, so I'm just gonna add a dab more glue so that I'm a little bit closer to that side seam because I only want to be a centimetre away, not not like a whole inch. And really, you know, I know I keep going on about it, but I can't emphasise enough the importance of waiting for that glue to dry because, you know, it's quite, it's a bit of an intimidating experience, isn't it? When you're when you're gluing something to something and then you know the glue's going everywhere and like the glue is smearing now and you're thinking oh my god it's all going wrong it's all going wrong i hate that lisa what does she make me do but if you if you really let the glue go drier than you think you need it to you're going to save yourself so much mess which cuts down on a lot of the stress so yeah, I'm 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 you know, I'm I'm wobbling that glue around. And because it's wobbling, I know that there's a lot of tack, there's a lot of bonding left that it can do, but it's just not see look, I'm even tapping it now. It's not coming away on my fingers at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take my now which side did I glue even? This side. I'm gonna take the I'm going to take the fabric purse and I'm going to get the sides in first. So it's going to buckle, it's going to buckle in and the front is going to bulge out a bit. That's fine. I want to concentrate on getting the fabric sides into the frame first of all. I'm going to try and do this holding it in the air. If I'm not successful, I might have to uh, get the camera to face down. So sides so the sloped sides of the fabric purse go into the sides of the frame first and one thing i will say i promise you no matter how many times you've done this no matter how expert you may or may not be glue is going to smear itself on the frame don't worry about that it comes off just by scratching it off with your fingernail that's fine don't don't worry about it. just be at peace with it it's no big deal it's completely okay for glue to go smearing itself all over the frame okay so here we go the sides go in first so I go in and I take this slope side and I kind of pull it in with my fingers and I'm kind of actually taking in that fabric and I'm forcing it into the channel. That's one side kind of done. Then, look, we're gonna have a, a glue smearing incident here. No big deal, I'm fine with that. I told you it was gonna happen, it always does. And I take the other side, so I'm more or less holding the side seam here and I'm gonna bring it to the side of my metal frame and then when that's in, I'm going to grab this sloped fabric side and I'm just going to 
pull it in. I'm going to pull it into the frame because I'm in control. I'm the boss. I want this fabric purse to go into the frame. And now the sides are pretty much in. Nothing is even yet, but that's okay. And at this point, now that the sides are in, there's still the top to do. So I'm now at this point, going to pull the top of the fabric purse into the top of the frame with my fingers. You'll notice I haven't got any tools involved yet. It's all just fingers and thumbs at the moment. Now it's getting a little bit hard for me to hold it into the air. I'm going to place it onto the table and this is where I'm going to get my flathead screwdriver and start shoving, stuffing, or whatever you want to call it, the fabric purse into the frame. And you don't want to be gentle about this. What that you do need to do is that whenever you, wherever you place your screwdriver onto the fabric, before you exert any pressure, you need to be happy that the screwdriver is not going to slip and scratch your frame. So be careful when you place, before you exert any pressure, that you're going to be satisfied that the screwdriver will not slip. Because when, you've, when you're happy with where you've placed your screwdriver on the fabric, you want to be pushing quite hard. And basically pushing as far as the as the um, metal frame will allow you to. And the reason that we wanted this to be somewhat grippy is now, I don't know if you can see, my frame, my, my fabric purse is completely inserted into the frame. It's all into the frame now, but it's by no means central. We haven't, we're not home and dry just yet. We are home and dry when the side seam matches beautifully with the hinges of the frame. So whatever we do move, moving forward, we want to make sure that the side seam of the fabric purse meets beautifully with the hinge of the frame. And also, if you went to the trouble of putting um, uh, center top edge markings, you want to make sure that they match on the purse as well as the frame. And at this point, the glue is still plenty wet enough for the fabric purse to slide around the frame. So I'm going to get my pointy tool and I'm just going to kind of grab the, the purse with it and slide the fabric inside the channel because even though that glue was touch dry, it's still plenty wet enough for me to do this adjustment of sliding the fabric purse inside the frame. So it's still, and what, uh, it's still sliding around and I can still move it no problem. Every now and again, your screwdriver is going to get smeared with glue, which is okay, but be careful that after it gets smeared with glue, you wipe it off because then you don't want to put your glue smeared screwdriver and then smear your lining, which is very annoying, will make you cry, don't want to do that. So just squish it and slide it around until you've got you've got the marrying of the side seam beautifully with the hinge of the frame. Now if you find that there isn't enough of a bond, sometimes it happens that maybe you didn't quite put enough glue um, close to the side seam. No big deal, just take the fabric purse away and then literally add a dab of glue here, wait for a few minutes for it to, to dry off like we did before and then push it back in. Don't ignore it and think, oh, do you know what, it'll be okay, it's only a tiny bit, because you will, you, you'll end up with a purse that's not as strong as it can be. So if you, now that I've taken it away to show you, I do need to add a dab of glue. So yeah, 
make sure when you add the dab of glue that it's not going to go beyond this gap because like I said before we don't want to be seeing glue on the side seam because that's where it shows up on the purse I'll, I'll try and dry it a little bit faster for the sake of the video and smush it back in okay there I'm quite happy with that now once you've got your lining side all inserted well that's coming away now so no problem I just added dab more glue not too much so once you're you're basically finished when the side seams match really well with the hinge and that they're obviously that there are no gaps anywhere else and everything is inserted you know the fabric is inserted inside to the frame as far as it will go once you've got the lining side looking nice you need to see what the fabric side is doing or should I say the outer side is doing see look there's glue glue ooh scenario on the frame everywhere that's fine to be expected there now can you see can you see there's a little bit of a bumpage there now I don't like that I don't want that and that's because there's probably too much fabric in this corner so while it's still wet I've got the time to go and ease the fabric purse inside this corner so that I can flatten this unsightly bump around so that's why you need to see even if the lining looks to be inserted nicely while the glue is still wet you need to be happy that the outer is also inserted just as nicely so I'm going to try and ease some of that fabric bunching at that corner so that I can flatten that bump and I can tell you that even though the glue is beginning to dry now I can feel that there's a bit of resistance there's still plenty enough for me to slide the fabric purse inside the frame if I need to well, actually I'm going to use that the pointy end of my tool now because it's just got that extra bit of grip that I need that's better perfecto okay right so that's one side that's one side glued in now to go straight to gluing the other side now remember why remember I said if you've got a front side that's your favorite and you really really like a touch more than the other side you do the front side first because as we're about to do the other side you'll see now it's not quite as easy to do the other side because this frame is now affixed to one side of the purse so the access is not quite as easy as it was when there was no frame on the purse so that's why you need to do the front side get it looking lovely and centered and whatever so that if the back side is not quite as perfect as you wanted it is far less of an issue so I repeat the process I'm just going to add my glue into the metal side of the frame as before so see what I mean you know like the fabrics getting in the way a little bit here so I've got to fold it back a little bit it's certainly harder to get it to face the camera 
um, because this other side's in the way so I'm not even going to try folks but all I'm doing is I'm making sure that I've got a good bead of glue running all the way around and I'm being very careful not to miss any bits that's one side and I flip that over leave that to cure and then I start again on the other side approximately a center away from the centimeter away from the side seam gluing the very top edge and the glue is actually seeping into the fuzz of the fleece which is what I want glue all the way to the other side until I reach about a centimeter away from the side seam on the other side flick the head away put the glue cap on straight away and then as before we wait this will be a convenient moment to actually go and get the cord back in two seconds because we're going to be using this stuff in a moment. So cord comes included in the Easy Peasy 2 purse kit. And for this purse, I figured out that it needs to be about 23 centimeters long for either side. So whilst the glue is drying, I'm going to take the opportunity to measure that up now and cut it and I shall explain what it's for in a moment and um, just to, just in readiness you'll notice you'll see that those ends um, I've made sure that they're not too frayed and um, fluffy at the ends we don't want we don't want fluffy ends and this this cord uh, you'll see it in action in a minute is used for strengthening the bond of the fabric purse to the frame and I don't think that you'll be able to see it but I've actually jammed the cord in the lining side and it's between the lining and it's between the frame and I'm you know I've used my um, screwdriver to jam it in and that just really really strengthens you know it really ensures that you know, you swing your purse around that the two two pieces, the fabric and the frame, are not ever going to come apart from each other. So I'm going to put that to one side in readiness and um, do a little bit of a wobble test. I know for a fact that it's a little bit too early to get going. So even though, I'll say folks, that even though the glue is not coming away on my fingers it's a little bit too wobbly for my liking if the glue is too wobbly it means it's too wet and it means that you're just going to end up being covered in glue and you'll never want to do this again so we we want to uh, we want to avoid that you you could see earlier that even though i let my glue dry for quite a long time there was still plenty opportunity for the for me to slide the fabric purse inside the frame when I was adjusting and getting thin central so honestly I can't I can't say it enough let that glue go nearly dry and I promise you it'll just make life so much easier when applying the I'm just cutting the thread tails there applying the, the purse to the frame and um, I'll make sure that you can see this bit because I don't think you I don't I don't think that you could see it clearly the last time. Yeah, that bit's still a little bit still a little bit wet. Okay, let's go for it, shall we? Okay, so as I said before, the sloped the sloped edges of the fabric purse go into the side edges first. We are not going to attempt any 
we're not going to attempt getting the fabric inside the top the top straight bit we're not interested in that initially we're only concentrating on getting the side edges of the frame put in first so you start off so you start off with one side and then you do the other side and then you do the top side. So it's in three stages. So first thing I do is I um, bend the purse a bit and I bring it to the frame and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of grabbing, I'm getting ready to grab the purse frame and I'm, and I'm gonna be pulling, I'm gonna be pulling, I'm gonna be pulling that fabric purse into the frame. And as like last time, glue is just gonna go all over the frame. And that's fine. Expect it, it's no big deal, really. It can be picked off afterwards. So here we go. I'm getting the fabric sides pulled into the frame sides. And when my fingers get covered in glue, I need to stop and dry them off because I don't want to put my glue smeared fingers onto my pretty lining. So just, you know, take your time to prevent that from happening. Right, so that's one side in. It's still rough and ready, but the fabric is inside the frame in the side now. So now I'm going to kind of hold that in place with my thumb whilst I turn my attention to the other side. And then I'm going to force that fabric into that frame side like that. And I can feel that glue is going all over the frame. And it's honestly, it's absolutely fine. So now my sides are pretty much in. They're, they're, they're pretty much in. It's not pretty, still ugly, but they're pretty much in. So now the sides are in, I can now start focusing on the straight top edge and then use my fingers to sort of manipulate that into the straight top edge of the frame. Just using my persuasive and coaxing fingertips. And if the sides pop out, no big deal. It's just at this stage, all the more easy to control. And you see, look, look at that glue on that frame. Really, it's absolutely fine. So now I can safely report the fabric is completely inserted into the frame. And now what's left to do is to ensure that the side seam of the purse meets beautifully with the hinges. So I'm going to put this down on the table now and um, go in with my tool and start stuffing the fabric. Now it's getting covered in glue, which is why I'm stopping to clean the screw the screwdriver head because I need to avoid getting glue screw screwdriver head onto my pretty lining. Now just pushing that fabric all the way up inside to that frame as far as it will go and I'm being and I'm being firm and I'm also you know being steady with it as well because we want to avoid exerting too much pressure and then slipping and scratching the frame which is heart-wrenching because uh, I can tell you okay that's already looking even And you may need to you may need to sort of run past more than once and that's okay now I, I my side seam matches matches really nicely with the hinge I know it's only one centimeter of view but it's such a lovely detail each time you open your purse and that you see that it matches it's just one of those really satisfying things that that to be honest is often a nicer finish than something that's store-bought 
you know, people really give themselves a hard time about perfection when they're making things. But on store-bought items, they are very often far from perfect. There, okay, right. So I'm really, I'm happy with how those side seams are meeting. I now need to look over on the right side and see if, if there are any bumpages. There's one. I want to flatten that out. That looks really nice. I'm happy with that. But I can see a bump here that I want to flatten out. So there's too much bunching at the corner here. So I'm just going to take my tool and reduce some of that bulk at the corner so that it doesn't bump out anymore. That's better. Lovely. Look, don't they look nice together? The purple and the... <gasps> I thought that when the purse is lovely and plain on the outside, that you need to have a nice lining on the inside because it's, it's just a nice surprise, don't you think? Okay, right. So I'm happy with how that's looking. I'll just do any fine adjustments now because now's the time to do it. Once you've put your cord in, that's that. You're, you're done for the day and you can't really adjust anymore. So just have a look around, make sure that you're happy with what's going on the front and what's going on on the back. That looks really nice, I'm happy. Okay, now we're almost there people. So I've got my cord and for this purse, I've cut the cord to 23 centimeters long. And I'm going to stuff this cord one side at a time into the channel. And I do that by folding the cord in half and I find the center point. And then I put the center point at the top edge center of the frame. And then I just smush it in with my fingers And I'm just going to chase it all in with my fingers initially. And it should feel a little bit full and it should feel just a little bit too tight. Just a little bit. I, that's, that's ideal and that's exactly what we want. Because by the time the, the glue has fully dried and, that, and that, that this cord is in there, you know that this purse is gonna last you for ages and ages because the bond is super tight. So just keep chasing the cord in with your fingers, just with your fingers at this stage. And if you think it's gonna be slightly too long because obviously you don't want this cord to be sticking out here because that would just look rank. What you need to do is just just shorten it a tad with your scissors, no big deal. And then just, just carry on pushing in there. Okay, so that's pretty much in. And then all you need to do is go in with your flathead screwdriver and push in all the way. Now, this this point, it's really easy to have screwdriver slipping against the frame incidents. So be very careful at this stage to when that you are pushing on the cord only and that your screwdriver is not going to slip and scratch the beautiful glossy surface of your metal frame. Because if you do that, th there's nothing you can do and it's quite upsetting. So. This is going to fray a little bit too much, so I think I'm just going to trim here, trim this end off, and then push in. And then when that side is done, repeat in exactly the same way as before. So you basically want to be pushing in this cord 
A as far as it will go and B until you can no longer see it. And it will go in so it's visible. So if it is visible, it's because you haven't pushed it in far enough. Okay, right now to do the other side in exactly the same way. And I already know now that this was just a touch too long. Uh, so I'm going to trim it off. Maybe 22 centimetres is, is, you know, the sweet spot, not 23. Experiment. Always cut a little bit too long rather than not enough. And then just chase the cord in with your fingers. Well, I'm mighty hungry now, I tell you. It's, I'm going to have noodles for lunch. I'll be honest with you, I'll have noodles for pretty much most lunches. I am a noodle fiend. Okay. If you find that it won't quite go in with your fingers, don't worry. It's just it's just to get it it's just to get it started really. Okay, and then we go in with the tool. Always do the straight top edges first before going into the corners and then do the sides last of all. Right, that's getting a little bit frayed. If you wanted to, I guess there's nothing wrong with putting a dab of glue on the um, cording piping ends to prevent it from fraying. You certainly could do that if you wanted to. I, I don't because I'm, I la I'm lazy, I guess, but um, do you know what? It'd probably make my life easier. We're almost there. Okay, and then the final thing to do is to pick off the glue. Now the glue does come away quite easily with using a thumbnail and I would advise you to do it at this point before the glue goes completely dry. I mean if it's completely dry it still will come off but it's just a little bit harder. You just have to you have to battle a little bit harder when it's completely dry. So I like to I like to do it at this point. Right, I'm not going to finish off because any minute now my tummy is going to make some rather scary noises. It's my lunchtime, your lunchtime too. So thanks for <laughs> if anyone is stuck with me to watch the video. I'm really grateful. But um, yeah, we're finished. Let's take away the pretty paper. So yeah, that is, uh, the very final step is, what is a nice thing to do is to sort of pinch out, pinch out the base of the purse, just to make it a little bit more, you know, visible. And I think you'll agree, I mean, yeah, save for all of the glue bits, how posh, how posh that looks. So, you know, I hope you liked this colourway. I'm, I'm going to be putting this in the shop later today. It's probably going to be called Plum Peonies, but I'll put a link up for it. It looks really pretty. And there's no reason why you couldn't make this yourself. I hope you like it. See, it wasn't that difficult, was it? So really the trick was to neaten all of your seams to make sure everything matches 
to reduce the seam, the bulky seam bits at the top edge and to let the glue go dry. And it's a lot, lot easier. Oh, thank you, Karen. So now, now we're finished. We have completely made the purse. This is a your purse frame purse. It definitely looks like you've bought it from a nice shop. It really doesn't take long to make. And it's made from PU. It's made from PU. You can get it wet. You can take it out in the rain. It's not going to wear down. The glue doesn't make it go funky. Yeah, you could you can definitely, definitely make these yourself. But if you find that when it comes to gluing and you don't know what to do, just hit me up on Facebook and ask any questions. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Donna. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the demo. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm really glad that you watched and you enjoy oh bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. What a fab job. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Louise. Oh, just back from shopping. Catch up later. Thank you, Morag. The video is in two parts. Bless you, Anna. Welcome. Absolutely welcome. Thank you, Wendy. You are more than welcome. Cheers, Anna. Thank you. So if any of you have any questions at this point in time right now, um, I'll, I'll hang around for another five minutes or so but if you don't um, you can leave me any questions um, on Facebook I won't be able to answer all of the replies but if there are any burning questions I'll certainly reply to those and I'll do a cheat sheet which shows you all of the stitch lengths and any of the other fundamental details that you might have missed Oh, thank you, Helen. I'm glad they're your fave colours. Brilliant. Beverly is now looking forward to making the purse. Excellent. That's exactly that's exactly what I wanted, Beverly. I don't I don't want anyone to be frightened of the gluing. It's it's not as intimidating as it sounds. It's just you know let that glue dry. You'll make your life so much easier. Oh, thank you, Anna. That's very kind of you. You're welcome. Mary says, thanks for taking the time to do this. My pleasure, Mary. Uh, I've been making these purses for such a long time and I've known in my heart I should have done this a long time ago. So I was more than happy to do it. So thanks for watching. <laughs> pleasure, Lynn. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. More than welcome. Thank Tina says, thank you. This was so helpful. Now I know what I've been doing. <laughs> Bless you, Tina. You're more than welcome. <laughs> I'm glad it was helpful. Carol uh, Carol says, I came on this video part way through. Will it be posted, posted somewhere so that you can catch up? Yes, Carol, it will. It's going to remain on my You Handbag page group, Facebook page. And I'm also going to place it on my You Handbag by Lisa Lam YouTube. I'll post the links for those. And I'll also be putting them in the newsletter. Thank you, Mary Jane. Thank you for saying it was informative. Welcome. Diane says, just been able to join. Sorry, I missed it. Live catch up late. Thank you, Diane. You'd be awesome. I mean, you, you'd be awesome at PU. Uh, I know you've been using your loads of PU, so this will be a breeze for you. No problem. All right, then. So... Oh, Brill, thank you. Thank you, Carol. That's very kind of you to say that. All right, so I thought that looks like everything. I'm going to go off and... Oh, Lynn wants to know, was that the 4mm piping cord? I've never realised it was needed in purse frames. Um, yes, it is the 4mm. It is the 4mm. I find that the stuff I use is perfect because... It almost feels like it's slightly too fat, which is exactly what you need, but not so fat that it doesn't fit under. So four mils is perfect. And um, some people are in two schools about the piping cord. Some people just say, well, if you glued it in properly, you shouldn't need the piping cord. But I think, well, you know, if you can strengthen something and it gives you peace of mind, why not add the piping cord? And another thing I'll say is the Japanese 
Japanese people have been making purse rain purses handmade for a long time and they always use some sort of cord so I think that adding the cord is a, a good idea. Suzanne says you can remove the glue from the fabric with nail varnish remover pads. Nice tip. I imagine when it's still a bit wet right? Do a sample test first. That's really really helpful Suzanne. Yeah for those people who've had a little bit of a glue incident nail varnish remover can remove the glue but just do a spot test first. Marjorie says thank you for this I'm now inspired to try this again the last time was a glue nightmare oh bless you I, I know I, I, I know it, it can quite easily be a glue nightmare and it feels all fingers and thumbs but if you if you just do those tips where you whereby you wait for quite a while for the glue it really is so much easier okay I think we're done so um, yeah, if you if you guys need any more help uh, or you have any comments, please, if you do make this purse, please share your purses with me. Either share them with me on my Lisa Lam Facebook profile or share them on my You Handbag page profile. I'd really, really love to see them. If you would like the same kit that I used, please look for the Easy Peasy Purse to kit in my youhandbag.com shop and if you need any help with looking for that do let me know because I promise you it is easy peasy okay right so I had a good time um, I'm really really hungry now though so I'm off and I'll be back later I'll have a look through the comments and if there are any big old questions I'll answer them and um, I'll probably get that cheat sheet done for later today early tomorrow um, Oh, before I go, acetone on a Q-tip or an earbud will remove the glue from the frame easier than your fingernails. Nice tip, Julie. Yes, acetone. Um, yeah, acetone nail varnish remover should do the trick. That's a nice tip. That would save your fingernails, definitely. Okay, and with that, I will go. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this purse. Catch you later. Have a lovely lunch, people, or whatever time zone that you're in. I can't believe so many people from so many time zones watching me today. It's brilliant. <laughs> okay, bye.